Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Havana in front of the oldest existing business in Mason County, the Mason County Democrat. And it's owned by the same family that owns the oldest established business in Fulton County, the newspaper up there. Well, Bob Martin's with me now, and he's going to take us through this, uh, this wonderful old business. Bob, your family's been in the newspaper business for a long time. In Fulton County, for example, your family's been in business since 1855. That's right, Mark. Uh, my great-great-uncles, uh, Davidson's, founded the uh, Fulton Democrat in 1855. And this newspaper was founded even before that, but not by your family. Correct. It was founded in 1849. Yeah. That's a, that's a terrific record of, uh, of, uh, of uh, accomplishment. Yes, yes, we uh, <laughs> enjoy the newspaper business. We've been involved in it my, my, all my life and yeah. my, my family before me, too. During this program, we're going to get a chance to look at some of the history of both these newspapers, uh, some of the stories they've covered throughout the years and how they fit into the, the towns that they, uh, that they uh, represent. But first, this building that's on Market Street here in, uh, in Havana is interesting because well, the, the sign up there says J.E. Meyer, 1888. Yes. So, that's that's what this building dates to, and that's the building you're in. This building was built in 1888. The uh, lower story was a uh, farm supply building, and the upper was the uh, opera house. Okay, it was built by the Meyer family, so that's mm -hmm. why they had their their name plate on yeah. both this building and later they built this building as well. Okay, and and your company, the newspaper here, has what three storefronts here? Actually, four. Four storefronts. Okay, so so you've got this almost this whole block, don't you, on that side? Yes, and. Um, the interesting, the uh, the opera houses, they were always on the upper floor for some reason. Um, and you decided to put a racquetball court up there on that, on that far side, huh? It worked out well because <laughs> the hardwood floor was still there from 120 years yeah. before, but it was easy to finish and put up the court. Yeah, you still use it? Still use it a, a little bit, yes. Is that right? Okay, so when, when folks come in, they come in this, this middle right door here, and that's where the, the entrance is to the office, okay? So that's where they would meet a receptionist there. And they would be coming in either to buy a newspaper or to bring in some printing business, right? Or whatever, huh? Or, or what else visit. do you do? We, we pass the time too. <laughs> you come to visit. <laughs> yes. So your printing business, we see that over there, and you're still printing not only this newspaper but the Fulton County newspaper as well, right? And other and other newspapers. About 18 other newspapers as, as well as our others. 18 others. Yes. No kidding. Okay. So that's how you all have been able to thrive through the years. A lot of new, a lot of smaller newspapers have not been able to make it. True. We, we've had the combination of both sheet-fed printing, web printing of newspapers, and our own newspaper operation. Mm -hmm. So we've relied on all three to carry us through. Yeah. And you've still got the printing press in there, which you fire up, what, every night, Monday through Thursday? Monday through Thursday, yeah. every night. Well, that's terrific. Can we go on in? Sure. Certainly. Okay, Bob, we're going way back now. We're, we're going to start with the, the Fulton. It's not called the Fulton County Democrat. Just it's the, the Fulton, Fulton Democrat, Democrat okay? Right. Which was not the older of the two papers, but it, it stayed in the family longer. It's been in the family since 1855. Since it was founded. To the present day. Right. How do you feel being the guy who's carrying on this? It's, is, it, is it a burden or an honor to do this? It's always been an honor. Has it's always it? been an honor. To follow in real pioneers in, in the newspaper business yeah. in, in this part of the state. Yeah. And, and, and really, like we mentioned earlier, smaller newspapers have had a tough go. So it hasn't been easy to keep it going, has it? No, no, it hasn't. Especially the last eight or ten years have been mm -hmm. pretty tough on not just newspapers, but small businesses in general. Yeah. And you've had to look for ways to to be able to grow your business in, in, uh, in other ways, like, like your commercial printing and those right. kinds of things. But back to the Fulton Democrat, 1855. Um, what were the Davidson brothers to you? How does that lineage work out? The two Davidson brothers are my great, great uncles. Great, great uncles. Okay, let's start with this chap here. This, Who are we looking at here? That's W.T., W.T. Davidson. W.T., okay, and he was one of the founders. He was one of the founders. 1855. Had, did he have any newspaper experience at that time? or did Actually, he had, some, idea? he had some newspaper experience. He had worked as a printer at the uh, what's, what's now the Peoria Journal Star in Peoria before they came to uh, uh, Lewistown okay. and started the and Fulton he had Democrat. A, he had a brother. And who are we looking at here? That's James Davidson, his older brother. Mm -hmm. And the two of them started the paper in 1855. Mm -hmm. 
makes you wonder how back in 1855 how they did that. I guess the bank was glad to see them. Now, what you've been able to save and have opened up for us here is the original, the right. first publication of the Fulton Democrat. And this dates to July 14th, 1855. That's precious, isn't it? Absolutely. I, I, this is probably the only copy in existence. And, and these earlier issues had never been microfilmed either, so this is, this is the issue of the, the Fulton Democrat. Is that right? Okay, and I'm, I'm looking up here in the right corner, and it says, uh, and I thought to myself, boy, this is expensive, $1.50 in advance. What does that mean? That's the annual subscription price of the Democrat from 1855. Okay. That's the, uh, now, that wouldn't be delivered by any chance, would it? Actually, I think these were mailed. Yes, they were. No kidding. Yes. I'll be doggone. And we st see up here, publisher, James M. Davidson is the publisher of this, uh, uh, this inaugural publication. He and brother, uh, he and the brother, I guess they switched off being publisher. Or did that work? Did that work? Well, out? what happened in 1858, three years later, W.T., the younger of the two brothers, bought out his brother's interest and became the sole proprietor of oh, is that the right? Fulton Democrat. Yes. I wonder if they had a fight. They may have. Yeah, but they didn't write anything down about no, that. No, no. Okay, no. all right. Um, then, let's, let's look at the lineage here a little further. This guy looks like an aviator, but he's really a printer, isn't he? Actually, he was an aviator. Was he an aviator? He was a biplane instructor for fighter pilots in World War I. No kidding. He took his leave from the newspaper for okay. the Great War. What's his name? Gilman Davidson. Gilman Davidson. So this would be the son of which brother? Of W.T. W.T. William Davidson. Okay. And before we leave this fellow, James, he had an interesting uh, uh, past with the Lincoln family. Yes, yes he did. Um, his actual um, experience with the Lincoln family started with, with Abraham Lincoln in Petersburg because the Davidson family came from Petersburg to Lewiston. Mm -hmm. And before they settled in Lewiston, they ran a business in uh, Petersburg mm -hmm. that uh, was at the same time, I believe, as when uh, um, Abraham Lincoln was the postal postmaster at New Salem. Oh, okay. And so they were acquainted with Lincoln when he was in New Salem, mm -hmm. long before they ever got into the newspaper and business. And I guess James was quite a musician. Yes, yes he was. So that's how he got involved with the Lincoln family. And then while the Lincolns were living in Springfield, that's when James would teach them music? He was the music teacher to... Uh, Abraham Lincoln's wife and their oldest son, Robert. I'll be doggone. That's fascinating. Okay, now we've gone to Gilman. We've talked about Gilman. Did he run the paper for a while? He ran the paper from about 1916 until 1963. Oh, that's a good long time, isn't it? We also have a picture of him here at the press. This is Gilman, I think, right? Yes, yep. yes, okay. at, the, at the newspaper press in the mm -hmm. Lewiston office. Mm-hmm. An old flatbed Mealy vertical. Wow. And you're talking about the press or your... Or yeah, your I'm own? talking about the, 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 the newspaper press. <laughs> the newspaper press. And that would be similar to what we're looking at here. Yes. Okay. This is the actual uh, parts manual for the press that was in Lewiston. Mm -hmm. No From kidding. the Mealy uh, newspaper, or newspaper press uh, company and, in uh, Chicago. And they had that in there until, what, the 1960s maybe? Actually, it was there after we started uh, uh, printing it offset for a few years until uh -huh. it was finally taken out. Mm -hmm. Would, I wonder what happens to those old places, you know? I mean, I'm sure there's a graveyard for these, but wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to save all of these things? We, we saved what we can. We still yeah. have a linotype out in the garage that we've saved. Is from that, that right? Era. Yes. And, okay, now it's, we mentioned it's still in the family. You're the latest one. So this is Dad. This is your dad, right? Yep, that's my dad from the press that was put in in 1963. In the first uh -huh. few years, he was the operator. Uh-huh. So the Martins have always, they, they've worked. They didn't just get to live off the paper. They worked the paper, didn't they? We, we have a history of being printers, as well as uh, the Davidsons. Mm -hmm. They wor both worked in the print shop yeah. as well. Yeah, And, of course, you work pretty hard, too, don't you? You're here all the be. time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, you and your wife, Wendy, are actual, uh, I don't know if you're partners or not, but she's the editor and you're the publisher, so you work together very closely on this enterprise, don't you? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. We always have. Over Terrific. 40 years. <laughs> Terrific history lesson. Um, I, I, you know, I would like, if I, if I wasn't afraid of this publication, I'd just finger through here and take a look at the whole thing, but I'm afraid I'd rip it, it up. It's pretty delicate. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to give it to me. But that's terrific. That, that settles sort of like the, the lineage of the, of the uh, Lewiston paper, the Fulton paper. Um, next, we're going to bite off on the uh, Mason County Democrat, okay? Oh, Wendy, I, I mentioned that, that you and Bob run these businesses together. Right now, you're the editor, right? 
I am. Of the Mason County Democrat. Are you also the editor of the Fulton Democrat? I have some editorial duties mm -hmm. over there, but not all of it. Yeah. So you have an editor up there, somebody yes. who takes care of some of that. Okay. And it used to be that you had an office in Lewiston and in Canton. Mm -hmm. Now the office is just in Canton and in Havana. Those, these two offices run the business. Okay. Um, we talked about the Fulton Democrat which it was started in 1855. The Mason County Democrat even predates that, doesn't it? It does. Mason County Democrat, the predecessor papers to the Mason County Democrat uh, started in 1849. Mm -hmm. uh, the actual name Mason County Democrat came up uh, in the 1880s. But in the early years, um, the Mason County Democrat has been in and out of the family several times. Mm -hmm. And um, James Davidson, who was the founder of the Fulton Democrat, sold it to his brother. He came over to Havana and he um, bought the Mason County Herald, renamed it the Squatter Sovereign. Really? And he went to town. Uh, I wonder what the story there was. Was there any explanation? The Squatter Sovereign. The Squatter Sovereign. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the newspapers back then, you know, Democrat or Republican mm -hmm. or Squatter Sovereign, it was all a statement of their political stand. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not exactly sure what Squatter Sovereignty was, <laughs> but um, between his colorful writing and uh, the colorful name, he had nationwide circulation. Yeah. People read him everywhere and they reprinted I'll his stories dark. from everywhere. Well, let's take a look again at what James looked like. This is, this is James, That's right? That's James we're looking Davidson. At here. Okay. And so he, had, he, he, was a, he was kind of a pioneer. And we're going to point out some other things as we look through some of this old copy that, uh, about James and some of the ideas he had. This particular newspaper we're looking at here is from January 21st. 1944. Of course, that would have been at the height of World War II. And I'm going to turn the page here so we can see some of the some of the things that. Okay, well, you see here, very big. This is 1944. This is encouraging people, I guess, to buy war bonds. Um, what will you do to make the victory a year? The goal, victory, the place, Europe, the time, this year, the responsibility, yours. There was a lot of this patriotic. A advertising going on at the time. Very interesting. But back to James. He was one of the first people to have like stringers around, wasn't he? Absolutely. He was uh, the first Illinois uh, editor to have correspondence. Mm -hmm. And he had correspondence from all over the uh, county um, to report the news to the newspaper. And nobody had done that before. Okay, darn. Okay, so, so he had these people out, out and about. So, I mean, he didn't have, I guess he didn't have a, a, a whole staff of reporters, right? So he would enlist these people that lived out in the, out in the areas of the county to tell them what's going on. Absolutely. We've got here one from Manito, Miss Mabel Starrett, looks like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one way to find out what's going on. Yeah. Um, he also had, it was another first, wasn't he? He was the first Illinois Weekly newspaper editor to uh, do his own political cartoons. And he'd carve them with a knife. Um, they used to call them uh, patent medicine cuts, they'd mm -hmm. be the ads. And what they'd look at is really very similar to what this looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but he would cut, carve it with a knife and do his own cartoons. So he was pretty talented oh, and oh, uh, those would also get reprinted all around the yeah. state. And then of course he, he didn't hang on to the paper forever. It was in and out of, of family hands until what, the 1960s? Uh, the Mason County Democrat um, came back into the family in the 1960s, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, again, it was in and out with James and, and uh, W.T. Um, uh, James went on to Carthage mm -hmm. and ran the newspaper there yeah. for the rest of his life. In the 60s, I guess, then Bob's dad got involved, and it's been in the family ever since, yep. huh? Yep. Okay. I, I wanted to, I asked you to pull out some, some issues that, <laughs> that you thought were, uh, that had important items of the day. And boy, you can't really get much more important than we will remember 11th of September. This is dated September 19th, 2001. It's a weekly newspaper. Um, and one of the things that, uh, that you did in those papers following 9-11 was print the flag for people to be able to display if they chose to. Didn't you? This flag, we always ran this flag for the 4th of July and inserted it in the papers mm -hmm. and we had advertisers who would uh, help support it. But for September 11th, we just reprinted the flag and put it in so it, everyone would have something to put out. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, as a weekly newspaper, the one advantage was that we had that whole week to be able to say, 
this is what happened and this is how we responded. Mm -hmm. And so that whole story is about the uh, prayer vigils and the um, Mason City had a big event going on and a big parade. And the last entry in the parade was the fire truck and they draped it in black for the firefighters mm -hmm. of New York. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, maybe we're a weekly, but the timing was perfect yeah. to provide the story that mm -hmm. said, this is how it happened mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, Wendy, we're, we're, uh, we're looking at the creation of a printed item now. This could be a newspaper, or it could be commercial work, right? But this is gonna get printed. What is she doing? Well, she just laid the flats on the camera. Mm -hmm. And the lights will go on in a minute, and they will take a picture. Well, somebody's in the dark room taking this somebody's picture? Somebody's in the dark okay. room. They've just exposed it. She knocks on the door to let them know she's ready. Okay. So uh, they've just taken the picture, and mm -hmm. they've got a piece of film back there that they're going to put into a processor. And this is the processor, and the film will be coming out of here. So it gets developed very quickly. Yeah, well, it gets started through. It takes several minutes for mm -hmm. each page to come here through. But here's right a page now. that was shot a few minutes ago. Okay. So it's coming off of a dryer right now. Uh -huh. And this page is what is going to be, uh, go on to what we call a plate. Mm -hmm. And that's what goes on to the newspaper press. Oh, okay. So it's a several step and, process. And the plate, th those plates are actually very thin aluminum, aren't they? They are aluminum and they're photosensitive, just like, a, like photo paper is when you're making pictures. Mm -hmm. So it gets exposed under a special UV light mm -hmm. and, uh, and then developed. Okay. Lots of lots of photography um, related things here. Here comes the light and taking the picture. Okay, so. picture's been taken. It's getting developed and it's going to come out here. And then we're going to take these these. Uh, I'm not sure what this right. material negatives. is, but negatives, these and we'll negatives. make a plate. Yeah. Let's go make a plate. So. <laughs> Okay, Wendy, we saw the negative come out of the dark room, mm -hmm. and it was on like a like a plastic, uh, some type of thing. But but Ryan here is getting out a aluminum sheet. This is called a, a metal plate. It a is made plate. of aluminum, and it's got a light sensitive surface on it. It's mm -hmm. all blue right now. Uh, now he's going to take the negative and put it on top. Okay. He's going to turn on a, ba a vacuum for a vacuum on the back of it. It's going to suck that plate down as hard mm -hmm. as it can to the surface, and it's also going to suck that negative onto it so that it's going to get as sharp a picture as it can. Okay. He's going to flip this over so that he can expose it. So here's the vacuum okay, frame. Okay, that's sucking all the air that's out of it. It wants to be as out. flat as possible. Yeah, right, so okay. that it's going to be nice and crisp and clear. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as the air is all out of it, he's going to flip it over and he's going to hit the exposure. We're going to see a purple light coming off the bottom. Mm -hmm. That is the UV light that mm -hmm. exposes this uh, material. So with that negative on top of there, you know, the negative has white parts and black parts. So only the white parts are going to get exposed. Okay. So when he takes that out, that's the part that's going to show up. Mm -hmm. And actually it'll be, it'll be the part that stays blue. Mm -hmm. so. And the, the humming sound that we hear is that vacuum. It's yeah. sucking the air out. And that's okay. the vacuum. Right. Will we go ahead and just do it. Oh yeah, that's the flip you were talking about. Yep, okay. there's the flip, and now he's going to expose. Okay, you see the ultraviolet light in the yep. bottom. Okay. So it takes about six seconds mm -hmm. for it to uh, expose. And then you and I are going to have to scoot just a little bit. Okay, we'll get out of the way then because Does he's going to Do you start at that, that end, out. Willie? Huh? This end yes. is... Okay, we're good. Okay. We okay. We're good. All right, we're good. All right, we're not in the way. That's good. Okay, okay so it's been exposed yes. now. Go ahead. Okay, so. turn it back over. Yep. And let's get in there. Okay. He's actually going to make those four negatives will make one plate, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here comes the the aluminum plate, and we're, we're get out of the way so yep. we're not. Come over here and take a look at. You can hear the aluminum, yeah. can't you? <laughs> it's real yeah. thin. Uh -huh. Makes makes an interesting noise. Now, it'll take about a minute and a half for it to get all the way through here. But it's developing it just like you would develop a picture at, mm -hmm. at the drugstore. Uh -huh. Make the print. Okay, that didn't take long, Wendy. Nope, nope. It takes about a minute and a half. Yeah. And it's all ready. And then this is ready. It has to 
have just a few little adjustments made to it and it goes straight on the press. Uh huh. It does go straight on the press. Mm -hmm. I want to see how that happens. Well, um, the, it has one more step before okay. it's got to crimp the edges. Now, that thing's not hot or anything, right? No. Nope. We, can, we can pick it up? No. Nope. So you can see it drying. I can. The light yep. kind of glimmers on it. It, yep. does, it is drying. Okay. 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 And it's ready. And you can actually hear the aluminum. And if you rub your fingers over that, it doesn't disturb it at all, nope. does it? No. Nope. It's, okay. it's like a picture, mm -hmm. like a photograph. <laughs> so it's not going anywhere. Well, Bob, we're in front of this. This is, I call it the monster because this thing takes up most of the room. This is your printing press, right? Yes, it's, it takes up quite a bit of space. Yeah. What type of printing press is this called? This is a cold offset newspaper press. Cold offset newspaper press. It's, this uh, is probably new from, what, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, something like Half that? Half the press is newer than the rest. This is about 10 years old, and this is probably about 18 years old. Okay, all right. But this is, this, up, to, up till 20 years ago, this was state of the art. But, yes. But there are a lot of newspapers that are still pr printing this way. They haven't gone all digital yet or anything right, like right. that, right? Right, the, right. The process is the same, only the electronics have been updated in, in the actual presses. Okay. When we, when we last left Wendy, we had seen how the negatives were put onto a metal plate. And we can see what's happened up there. Some of those plates are anchored now in the printing press. How does that get done? Well, before we bring the plates to the press, we crimp the ends with a, a small metal break that puts mm -hmm. just a ridge on both ends that serve as a grip for those plates to uh, lock onto the cylinder, mm -hmm. onto the printing cylinder. Okay, and those, and, and that will be there, there will be paper that that'll continue to rotate. Paper will rotate. What will slide under that and, and be inked to that uh, t specification, and that'll just turn. As long as you're turning that thing, you'll be creating a, a page. Right. Okay. We'll get a, a impression for every rotation of the cylinder. Okay. And on this press, we're printing both sides at once. Mm -hmm. Printing both sides of the sheet at once as the mm -hmm. paper travels up through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let's get the, let's go to the start of the process up here because I find this interesting. Wendy said that that the day is going to come when it's all digital and you all are going to miss the smell of ink, but you still use a heck of a lot of it, don't you? Well, the uh, demise of offset printing has been predicted time and time and time again, but yeah. it always seems to survive and always seems to be a place in the market for printing. Yeah. Um, speaking of ink, when you buy ink by the barrel, you buy it by the barrel, don't you? Absolutely. We buy it by the ton. There's probably about 2,000 pounds of ink in here, and we switch these tanks out every six or eight weeks depending on, right? our, on our demand. So you have a, you have a supplier that brings you these, 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 th these thousands of pounds of ink and then picks up the, the old container right. and takes it back, huh? So that, that container just gets refilled and then you get it sometime in the future filled Actually, up. Actually, these containers are designated just for us and so well, the oh, ones we send in are the ones that come back to us too. Uh huh. And this will last you how long? Maybe six weeks. <laughs> okay. And speaking, okay. Now, and we can see how this paper gets used. It gets, it gets wound all clear through here, but this is, is this a full roll? This is a full paper? roll. Weighs about uh, 1,300 pounds. 1,300 pounds. And this gets delivered too by a specialty outfit, I guess, huh? It comes directly from the mill, usually from Canada. Mm -hmm. There'll be a full truckload, a semi that comes in and we use a clamp truck to pick up these rolls like a big roll of Charmin and just carry it in and set it down. And how many of these would you buy at a time? There are about 50 to 60 in a truck. 50 to 60 in a truck, and, and, and how long would these, say, these two rolls last you? Oh, we'll probably use 20 of these in a week's time. <laughs> wow. So actually, paper and ink, that's a, ma that's a major expenditure for absolutely, you, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. In printing, the largest expenditure is for paper, even more than labor. No kidding. Has paper gone up a lot recently? Well, the market's kind of stabilized, but it's changed a lot because demand for newsprint has dropped considerably because of what's happened in the daily newspaper market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of those have either stopped or they've cut way back. Yeah. They don't. They're, they're, nearly they're as many demand pages is way down, so that's to. created a lot of, a lot of uh, con contraction in the newspaper yeah. market. Well, itself. it could be good for you. Could be. Could uh, be. Yeah. Now, explain to us as we walk by here what's going on. Is, is uh, we're going to see this thing run, but right now it's kind of quiet. Well, these units here, the Martin Automatics, are what are called flying pasters. And this allows us to continue running the press without shutting down when we actually get down to the end of a roll. Mm -hmm. and it makes a switch from, from the uh, core to the full roll without mm -hmm. stopping, by, without even slowing down. Okay. All right. So that helps you. That just keeps the paper rolling. That lets you feed, right? Yes. Yes. It okay. keeps production rolling. Okay. Is this the same? Same thing. Okay. 
and then the paper is going to eventually find its way into here. And what is, this, what, is, what is this part of the printing process called? Well, this is a four-color printing unit. It starts with red, then blue, then yellow, and black. Those four colors produce full color. Mm -hmm. The combination of those four produce full color. Mm -hmm. So this is just an economical way of, of producing full color. The other units are capable of doing it, but this is a much, much simpler process. Okay, that creates your color, and then... This, from here on out, cre just creates the, uh, the number of pages that you're going to end up with? Correct. Is that what, what Either black on? and white pages, or in some mm -hmm. cases we put spot colors on. Mm -hmm. just maybe a red or a blue or an uh, orange, just one color rather than doing the full color. Okay. And when you, when you end up with a product, uh, this would be, a, this is not a newspaper, but this is a, a, a circular, I guess. This a little, would, little booklet. Yeah. Uh, you did this for the, uh, the Shriners in Springfield. And you also would take this into the next room then, and you'd staple this and trim it. Trim, trim the three and sides you'd have out. And you'd have a nice, little, uh, a nice little booklet. Right. Hey, thanks to you and Wendy for all this. It's been terrific. It's, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. As you might suspect, when the Martins cover news and special events in Mason County, they take a lot of pictures that you'd never see in the newspaper. So one of the things they do is in the office here, they have a slideshow like this, the flood of 2013 going on. And another option they have is a projector you can see these pictures, these uh, left pictures that aren't in the newspaper, from the street, Market Street in Havana. With another Illinois story from the oldest existing business in Mason County, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.